This week we're going to look at X-Ray's multi-dimensional group by operation and use that to take some NAR data and create latitude average temperatures. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I want to look at X-Array again and talk about group by and specifically how to use group by in a multi-dimensional way. So we're going to get some NAR data from our example data that comes with MetPy. We're going to set the coordinates on that in X-Array. And then we're going to use group by to create a average temperature for latitude bends and be able to create a plot of what the average temperature at a latitude is with height in the atmosphere. So it would be pretty complicated to do without X-Array. I mean, of course we could do it, but there'd be lots of ifs and if it's in this range checks. And this is a much nicer, cleaner way and more powerful way to look at data. So first, of course, imports. Import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. I'm going to import just matplotlib as well for a color mapping trick that we're going to do. Import numpy as mp import x-ray as xr, and finally from metpy.cbook, we're going to import get test data. Speaking of that test data, we need to get that data. We're going to use x-ray's open data set, and we're going to call our get test data helper. We're going to get the nar example.nc file and we don't want it as a file-like object. All right, so that gives us our data set. We can see that we've got time, isobaric, x, and y as coordinates. So we have x, y model coordinates. Isobaric will be our height coordinate, and time, of course, is the time coordinate. This is a relatively small data set as it's included in our examples. So we only have one time, 29 isobaric levels, and just a couple hundred points in each dimension, roughly. And for the data variables, we're interested in temperature. Let's go ahead and pull out that data variable. I'm going to use metpy's parsecf on temperature. And if we look at that data variable, we see it's got time isobaric x and y. Well, we want lat and lon to be coordinates as well. Notice up here in the data set, they are as data variables right now. And they're not really variables. They're coordinates that we can use to make plots or to do computations over. So let's use ds.setchords. We pass that a list of lat and lon. And now if we look at our data set, those are no longer data variables, but they are indeed coordinates. So now we need to figure out what we're going to average over. Do we want every degree of latitude, every tenth of a degree of latitude? I think given the resolution of this model, something like, and two to our, of this analysis, something like a two degree bin would be fine. We don't have a huge range of data in here, so that's a balance between uh, how big the bin is and how many data points we have. Of course, if you're using something like a, a global model, you could maybe do five degree bins if you wanted something a little coarser because you've got so much data, or much smaller bins. So our latitude bins, we'll use NumPy's A range function. We want to go from zero to 90 in steps of two. So remember, we've got to say zero to 91 in steps of two, because we'll go up to, but not including that last point. So always verify that that worked correctly. And then we can label, if we wanted to, what those centers are in the, in the bins. So I'm gonna call them the bin centers. And if we think about our bins, we're going to have offset by one, basically, since these are too wide. So we're going to start at one and go to 90, 
and we're going to do that in a step of two. So if we look at our bin centers, between 0 and 2, the center is 1. Between 2 and 4, the center is 3. Between 4 and 6, the center is 5. So we did that correctly. Now let's actually see what it's going to take to get this mean temperature. We're going to call ds.temperature. Now we're going to call the group by, but specifically we want to group by bins because we're going to give it bins that we want to thing fit all of these data in that want to take this average over. I want to work in the latitude coordinate. Here are my latitude bins. And the labels for those are going to be bin centers. Okay, so now we've done our group by, what operation do I want to do next? We're just going to keep chaining operations here. I want to take the mean. We need to specify what dimension we want to take the mean over. Normally we would say, okay, we're going to take the mean over one specific dimension, but I want to take it over all dimensions, let's say. So we can use the all dims from x-ray. Now we can call mean temperature dot plot. We can also just look at it. All right, so it's a data array. And here's our plot. We've automatically labeled it lat bins and temperature isobaric. So we see temperatures going down and kicking back up. That's kind of interesting. And the range that these temperatures are in is a little bit interesting as well. Well, it's because we're taking the mean over all dimensions. What are the dimensions? Well, we've got time and we've got isobaric levels. So we need to isolate what level we want to look at, let's say. So to do that, I'm going to copy and paste that down here. And then let's select some data. Using cell, I'm going to say that the isobaric coordinate, I want to only get the 1000 HPA level. And we'll leave everything else the same. Actually, I'm going to combine this in the same cell here. There we go. So now we have a title that tells us what isobaric level we're at. And we see some values that make a little more sense for the Earth's surface. Now we do only have one time. But if we did have more than one time, maybe we want to be taking the average. Or maybe we don't over that. I could even select a specific time. And the easiest way to do that would be I cell time equals zero to get the zero with indexed time. And now we get a timestamp in the title because we've selected data down further. But these are the same plot. But now what I want to do is create a chart that shows me for every isobaric level in the model what this latitude temperature profile looks like. And I want to color them to show me what level in the atmosphere I'm looking at. We could do this several ways. We could uh, get a data array back that's got some more dimensions and work with that. For this example, I've chosen to use the selection and do the computation for each isobaric level. Because if I didn't want to do every isobaric level, if I had a model that had, let's say, 100 levels, and I don't want to compute it for every one of those, this example will be easily modifiable to just use the levels you want, say 100, 850, 500, and 300. So to do that, we're going to write a loop for L and DS dot isobaric means we're going to go over every value in isobaric. You could replace that with a list if you wanted to. And actually we can grab this line of code right here. And we're going to change 1000 out for whatever our level is. And then we can call plot.plot .plot our bin centers, the mean temperature. And if we wanted a legend, we could do that. Maybe if we use label equals L. And let's see what we get. All 
Oh yeah, we called this bin centers. There we go. And we get a plot like this. This is pretty interesting and we can already see some patterns that we may or may not expect. But the color scheme doesn't really lend itself that well. I mean, I can think about this for a minute and know what levels I must be looking at, what the direction of increasing level is. But I'd like to make this chart a little more visually clear. So the first thing that I can do to make it more clear is to add some labels. Latitude on the X. Temperature Kelvin on the Y. And I'm going to call get current axis dot invert y axis to flip my y axis so that the warmer temperatures are on the bottom of the chart so I can think about this vertically in the atmosphere. Okay, so that's part of the way. But now I want to transition this from cool to warm in my color map based on the value of L. You could do this a few ways. One way is to get the color map using matplotlib.cm.getColorMap, or get cmap rather, and the name of our color map. I'm going to use cool warm. Then I'm going to figure out the color in that color map. I'm going to call cmap on the level that we're at divided by the maximum level in ds.isobarics. This is a normalized level. 0 to 1, and then I'm calling CMAP to get a RGB value for that particular value, whatever it comes out to be. I'm going to set color to be C. And so there we go. We can see as we go from low to high in the atmosphere, we have lower starting temperatures, just as we would expect. And at the low latitudes, we're warmer and thicker than at the higher latitudes. This would be a great tool to show students things about what we expect the temperature structure of the atmosphere to be like, both with height and with geographic location on the planet. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.